If you've ever put a torch underneath your face, it can make you look quite sinister, like a gargoyle. So for those of you outside of the United Kingdom, this might seem a little parochial. I'm going to be talking about a shoot that I did on the 15th of March 2000 with Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, a kind of eccentric British Conservative MP who may, at some point, who knows, become Prime Minister. I took this now very well-known portrait, thanks to the internet, of him standing with his nanny, Victoria Cook, at a Georgian townhouse in Mayfair, which is one of the, as the Monopoly board will tell you, richest areas in the United Kingdom. I remember thinking at the time, imagine living in Mayfair, how the other half live. I think with the way things have gone, a more appropriate phrase would be how the 1% live. I photographed his dad, William, three years before for The Observer. It was to accompany an article that Lynn Barber had written. The article had the line, he turned 14 and became middle-aged. A really clever line. I guess you could say, like father, like son. The reason for the shoot with his dad was he was promoting this book he'd written called The Sovereign Individual, a disturbingly prescient depiction of the future. You have innocuous things like cryptocurrency, but also you have these hugely rich individuals that are more powerful than nation states. You have AI and widespread unemployment as a consequence. You have societal unrest. Social cohesion breaks down. There is violence on the streets. I'm sure Mog Jr, as a little boy, listening to his father at the dinner table, was probably quite affected by these views and maybe it impacted on the way that he saw the world. There's a documentary online, we'll put a post to it underneath the video, in which a 12-year-old Mog is driving around in a Rolls Royce and talking about how much he loves money. I love money, always have done. Why? Because you need money, um, and with money you can make more money. As Aristotle said, give me a child to the age of seven and I'll show you the man. Sitting and drinking the coffee made for us by his sister with whom he obviously lived, Annunziata, who's also in politics now, I was struck by how nerdy and boyish and young he looked. I decided to warm him up by doing some individual shots first. And so I took him outside into this area, but it was hemmed in by buildings because Mayfair is so overdeveloped because the land is so precious that this little square of area they had outside was hemmed in on all sides. And so the light was really coming from the top and very difficult to work with. Luckily, their house was quite unmodernized and I managed after a bit of poking around to find this amazing room at the top of the house, right up in the attic, that had this red wallpaper. The windows were quite low in relation to my subject and therefore he was being lit by light coming up from below, which everyone knows if you put a torch underneath your face, it looks quite sinister and spooky. It worked really well and made it a kind of eerie kind of atmosphere. The exposures were long, but that was okay because I had my tripod. But belt and braces, I decided I'd shoot a couple of frames with my ring flash, just to make sure I had something that was sharp and punchy. The ring flash creates its own weirdness. So I had an interesting atmospheric picture, but lit by two different light sources. I actually prefer the available light. Available light is always my preference. I had them where I wanted. I knew I had something in the bag that was quite strong, powerful, but it's always good not to be complacent, not to sort of get cocky and think you've got it. It's always good to push forward like a shark 
forget the fact you've got some good pictures, try and get more good pictures. And I thought I'll push it. And so I asked them if they would hold hands and there was no way they were gonna go for that. They were kind of clear about their boundaries. And I guess me saying that kind of marked the end of the shoot. Jacob Rees-Mogg wanted to be a millionaire at 20, a multi-millionaire at 40, and prime minister at 70. A kind of idea that I would have thought was ludicrous in the past. But then, you know, we live in a world whereby someone who's a reality TV star can end up being president of the United States. A world that was so kind of wisely predicted by Mog's father. So I guess who knows? I wouldn't bet against him. But that is not an endorsement 